chain mini. Hmm, how am I going to phrase this? Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. So we are temporarily done with the last three week series that we had going on with the Petco versus PetSmart care guide videos. If you guys missed those, those were actually a lot of fun to do. And I'll leave a link to them here, here, here. I think it's here. I hope you link to them there if you missed those. This week, we are going to look at some more controversial bearded dragon topics. So you guys know that I don't generally like to do controversial sorts of videos, but this is one that I get a lot of questions about, like a lot of questions about. So I thought that I would go over it. Really quick disclaimer, this video is not meant to offend anyone. I am not an expert. This is just a video about my opinions of controversial bearded dragon things. And those are just that. They're just my opinions. They're just what I have found and learned while keeping my bearded dragon. Yeah. You do you. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by iHeartGecko. So make sure to stay until the end of this video to find out all about this amazing company. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to be talking about is substrate, more specifically calcium sand. Now, if you don't know what calcium sand is, it comes in a couple of different forms based on where you get it and all that jazz that comes in all the different bright colors. And usually the bag has a picture of a bearded dragon or leopard gecko or something on it showing that it's okay to use it. The reason that this is a highly controversial topic is because calcium sand has been shown time and time again to cause impaction in bearded dragons. People want to use things like calcium sand because they want to make a desert looking setup for their bearded dragons. They want there to be sand in it and sometimes they want crazy colors of sand in that to make it look aesthetically pleasing to them but the truth is bearded dragons don't need that kind of sand bearded dragons come from deserts where the sand that is there is highly compacted and it's not made out of calcium that calcium sand gets into the bearded dragon's body and it's made of the same thing that tums are made out of so basically it just neutralizes their stomach acid and it makes it really hard for them to digest anything, even something as simple as their normal foods, and it can lead to impaction. Calcium sand also can dye your bearded dragon different colors. This one obviously isn't deadly like impaction is, but it still is very concerning. I have seen bearded dragons that are blue or they're orange or they're colors that they're not supposed to be because they've just been in that calcium sand for so long. So my personal opinion on this, if you guys have watched any of my videos ever, you already know the answer to this. I despise calcium sand. I don't like it at all. I feel like the risk way outweigh the benefits and I just don't see the point of putting your animal at risk of something deadly just so that it could look a little nicer. If you're looking for alternative substrates for your bearded dragons, you have a lot of options. Of course, as with most things in the bearded dragon care world, basically all of them are controversial. So you can really just do whatever you think is best for you and your animal after you have done the appropriate research. But other options are paper towels, newspapers, non-adhesive shelf liners. You wanna make sure they're not adhesive because the glue on adhesive shelf liners can and put toxins in the air as it heats up. So you definitely don't want that. You can do ceramic tiles. If you do like the look of loose substrate and you want to go that route, you can definitely do a bioactive setup with bioactive substrates for your bearded dragon. You can make your own bioactive substrate out of things like topsoil and play sand, not calcium sand, or you could buy the bioactive substrates made specifically for arid animals. You could even do like I do with my leopard geckos and do a tile substrate or whatever kind of substrate and put a dig box in there for your beard dragon. You have a lot of different options. The next one is one that I see on my videos all the time, people getting on to me about, and that is having a water dish in your bearded dragon's tank. The reason that this is controversial is because bearded dragons like a very low humidity, and sometimes having a water dish in that tank can raise the humidity. My personal opinion on this is that it really just depends on you, your setup, where you live. Basically, if you have a hygrometer in your tank to monitor the humidity of that tank and you don't 
have the water bowl directly under the heat lamp and you take the appropriate precautions, you might not have an issue with the humidity of your tank. When I had the water bowl in my tank, I had zero humidity problems. So I left it in there just long enough to see if she was going to use it. She didn't. It's not there anymore. But if your bearded dragon does soak in their water dish or they do drink out of their water dish and it's not messing up your humidity, keep a water dish in there. That is my personal opinion. Just coming from the fact that the concern here is that it raises the humidity. But if you're looking at the humidity and it's not raising, then there really isn't a concern. If you don't want a water bowl in your bearded dragon's tank, you don't have to have one. Bearded dragons actually do get most of their water from the bugs that they eat and the greens that they eat. You can also give them a salad and take a spray bottle and just spray the salad and that gives them even more water. Just make sure that if you do have a water bowl in there, you are keeping a check on that humidity. If it's too high of a humidity for too long for bitter dragons can quickly lead to respiratory infections. UV lights. This is a, another very hotly debated topic in bearded dragon world. For the most part, most people agree that bearded dragons need a heat light and a linear UVB bulb. The debate comes in with things like mercury vapor bulbs, which are bulbs that do put off a high amount of UV radiation, but they are in one spot as opposed to linear across the tank. This is another one that I personally can sometimes see both sides of. I did a video not too long ago about Bearded Dragon lighting where I go over all the different kinds of lighting, all the different setups of lighting. So my personal opinion on UV lighting from mercury vapor bulbs and coil bulbs. These things can be used effectively, but they are very specific in how they are used. So in something like getting a baby beer dragon, a 10 gallon tank, in that situation, you can use a coil UV light for that tank, but that baby's not gonna be in that tank for very long and that light is not gonna be sufficient as soon as they move up to the next size of tank. When you think of a dome that holds the UVB light, that light is coming out in a triangle. And so at the middle of that, that is where there's going to be a pretty high concentration of UV lighting. But then as you get around, the light gets dimmer around it. And so there's gonna be less UVB light put off as they get further from the bulb. To me, I don't like forcing my bearded dragon to only get their UVB light from one spot. If they were in the wild, they would have a full sun blasting on them, not just one little tube of light coming down over here in a corner. You also have a situation with mercury vapor bulbs where they have to be placed perfectly for them to work. So they have to be a certain distance away from the basking spot in order to put off the appropriate amount of UVB light. But they also have to be close enough to where their hot spot is getting hot enough. And that can be very tricky, especially for first time bearded dragon owners. Personally, I always think that it's better just to get a designated heat bulb with a dimmer switch so you can adjust it and a linear UVB light because that way you know that it is putting off the appropriate amount of UV B lighting. Represented Arcadia light bulbs put off wonderful amounts of UVB light, but the controversy on that on the pro coil lights and pro mercury bulb, people are basically just like, my animal's been fine for X amount of time. You want your animal to be thriving, not just surviving. That's just my personal opinion, but buying from chain pet stores. This is another huge one. And a lot of the controversy here just comes from not knowing why this is bad. Most chain pet stores buy their reptiles from places that are reptile mills. And reptile mills are basically places that just churn out a whole bunch of reptiles. They don't really care about the animals themselves. All they care about is churning out those animals to get a profit. When this happens, you have a lot of very poorly cared for animals. I am guilty of buying reptiles from reptile mills when I didn't know any better and I still feel bad about it and 
Anyway, if you were to buy a reptile from a chain pet store, a lot of people will usually go down the route of I was rescuing the animal. But what actually happens isn't that that pet store feels bad now because they had a dying animal. But what has actually just happened is that company now sees, oh, we just sold 10 bearded dragons. Now we need to order 15 more. So unfortunately, by rescuing that one animal, you've just contributed them continuing to buy those animals. And I know that, that is absolutely awful, but just like chain pet stores used to sell things like dogs and cats from large mills, hopefully one day by stopping buying reptiles from chain pet stores, they'll stop buying them from reptile mills and maybe they can start adopting them out. That would be super cool. Like I always say, if you do want to buy a reptile, please look into places like reptile shows and local pet stores, local breeders. Morph Market has a bunch of local breeders on there. Just make sure to check all the companies out before you buy from anyone. Even places like Craigslist have a whole bunch of animals that are in need of homes. My personal opinion on this is that we should try really, really hard not to buy reptiles from chain stores. I know some people don't have a choice. Some people, if they want to go and buy a reptile, there are no other options for them. And I am in no way, shape, or form saying that you're a bad person if you buy an animal from a chain store. I'm just saying that we should try really hard not to. And the last one we're gonna talk about is cohabbing. Cohabbing, if you are unfamiliar, is just keeping multiple bearded dragons together. For a while, people thought that you could keep multiple bearded dragons together. And I think that's where a lot of this controversy comes from is just people not being being the most up to date on their reptile keeping information. It is very easy to fall behind on reptile keeping information. It changes nonstop. The more and more that we keep these animals, the more and more that we learn about these animals and watch these animals in captivity, the more that we can grow our knowledge of how to take care of them and adjust accordingly. Sometimes places fall behind on that information on those care guides. And so that's where the controversy starts happening. It just kind of starts to snowball. For a while, people thought that a lot of reptiles, as long as they were in female pairs, could be kept together. And we have since learned that for a lot of reptiles, that's not true. Bearded dragons are one of these. Bearded dragons are incredibly territorial. They will fight for resources. Even something as simple as the basking spot, they will fight over. It isn't just biting and clawing and like physical fights. They will just lay on top of each other and one will try to soak up more sun than the other. And it could just quickly lead to a very bad situation. I personally don't think that bearded dragons should be cohabbed, whether they are male, female, 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 definitely not male, male. I don't think they should be cohabbed because at any point, they can snap and injure the other one. So my personal opinion is that it's not necessary. Reptiles are solitary creatures. Reptiles like to be alone. They like to know that all of that food source is their food source. All of that sun source is their sun source and that they don't have to fight over these things. It just is, in my opinion, an unnecessary risk that can easily be avoided. But that is all the controversial bearded dragon topics I'm going to cover in this video. There's so many. Bearded dragon care is in my opinion, probably one of the most, if not the most controversial animal to care for in the reptile hobby, because there's so much conflicting information. When I was looking into my bearded dragon, the amount of conflicting information was insane. I get messages all the time saying, I don't know how to do this because everything is conflicting. I understand you guys' pain, and I just wanted to shine a light on just a few of these things. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, or if you have other controversial bearded to dragon care things that you've heard and you want to discuss, leave a comment down below and we can talk about it. Or maybe I can do another one of these in the future. I don't know. We'll see. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos is such an awesome company that allows you to recycle old tanks that you may just have laying around and turn them into vertically standing front opening tanks for any arboreal animal. They also have some horizontal ones too, so that's awesome. These kids are amazing. I was able to take an old 29 gallon tank that I had laying around and turn it into a tank for my gargoyle gecko. Can you see her? Can you see this? No. And this tank has been doing fantastic. 
The amount of ventilation that this provides is amazing and my plants are doing good. I have all these little roly poly babies down here and I can just shine a light through the glass of the tank in order to grow plants, which is awesome. They allow for a really nice tank setup for a really affordable price. And you don't have to worry about a tank being shipped to you and breaking in the mail. Make sure that if you do go to the website and you order one of these amazing little kits that in the how did you hear about us box, you put Els Reptiles so they know that you guys are coming from here. Thank you so much to iHeartGeckos for sponsoring this video. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out goes to Country Girl for Life 12 for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. And this week's subscriber shout out goes to Exploring Alabama Junior for commenting on my videos and being super supportive. Thank you guys both so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Topics. So, people want to use things like calcium sand because they want it. I just don't like it. I feel like the risk way out rate. I just don't like it. Chain mini. Hmm, how am I going to phrase this? Most chain. I just remembered I was supposed to turn this up from 24 frames a second and I did not. This is just what it's gonna look like. It's fine.